Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina, visiting Parkway Hyundai, and I'm checking out a 2020 Hyundai Sonata in the SEL trim level. This Sonata is sitting on 215.55 Michelin tires, wrapped around 17-inch alloy wheels with a silver gloss finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors in the front and solid disc rotors in the back. The name of this color is Portofino Gray, and it's a fairly dark gray, and it's a little bit different from the normal gray. It kind of has, seems like it has a little bit of a green tint to it. Maybe it's just my eyes or something reflecting off of it, but hopefully the camera will be able to do it justice. But it's a really nice, classy color. The grill is almost completely gloss black. You can see the design here. And one of the things that that I've looked at, just looking at this vehicle is, is I, it's interesting to follow the lines and see what they kind of turn into. So you can see with the grill, it kind of has a, the lines of, of the grill go out like this, out and up like so. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Your radar adaptive cruise control sensor is hidden behind this panel here where there's no airflow. And the way the, the front end looks, it doesn't, it swoops down. The hood swoops down quite a bit. So it has that pretty cool look, but as far as swooping the sides, they don't really swoop very much. I don't know if you can see that. So it kind of gives it a wider look. It kind of has a wider look here in the front when I look at it. And I guess with this kind of dropping down, it just kind of extends it. it, makes it a little bit longer looking or wider looking and really interesting vehicle. It, it, it's just a, I think it looks really good. So you can just let me know what you think in the comments. So it does have some airflow going into the wheel wells for the aerodynamics basically it lets the air it allows the air to go in this way and flow out instead of the air creating turbulence around the wheel well uh, and they call it a, like an air curtain um, but it's just basically controlling the airflow when it pertains to the wheel wells so it does have that now the headlights are in reflectors for your low and your high beams and they're powered by LEDs. Really nice looking. Can't wait to look at this vehicle at nighttime. Now it has an LED daytime running light that underscores the headlights, but it also has one that goes on the hood, which fades into a chrome piece. So when the lights are turned off, it just looks like a chrome piece. But when you turn the light on, uh, it illuminates all the way up to most of the way and then it fades into a chrome piece which will, extends on the entire length of the vehicle almost all the way around uh, to the side of the vehicle I'll show you that in a second but I thought that was really unique and different I've never seen that before where it has a illuminated chrome piece that fades into and transitions perfectly into a reflective chrome piece it's really nice so looking at the profile here there's that chrome line that kind of goes here, extends all the way back here, and then, then wraps around the windows. Looking pretty cool. Now you do have some chrome strips on the top of each side handle, kind of blends that in. And then you have strong lines uh, here on the side, here on the bottom part, here and here, and all the way back here. But also, this line that's thick, and then it thins out and then re-thickens here. And then it has a sharp cutoff there and it kind of matches the angles as the uh, the tip of the headlight. So it matches that. So it kind of blends in. The lines are really interesting. Um, it's really fun to explore the design of this vehicle, especially since it's new, but just in general, it's just a really neat, appealing to the eye, as far as my eyes anyway. This is what the key looks like, and man, is it nice. It's fairly light for its size, and it has a really, smooth contour shape and it fits in your pocket nice very i think it's pretty light i mean it feels 
lighter than for its size than most keys. I mean, it's it's really impressive as far as the weight. It does have a physical key on the inside and a nice sheen to it. It just looks like a quality key. Um, the lightness though does kind of make it feel like it might be fragile, but who knows about that? It could be just a really strong plastic. Who knows? But uh, it does have the lock and unlock buttons, the ability to open up the trunk, and a panic button here, and a remote start. That's a must in my book. So let's go ahead and push that room, that panic button and hear the horn. Hmm, <laughs> that's nice and it's loud. It doesn't have the too much of a beepy horn that I expected. So as long as you have this key with you, it can be in your pocket, in a bag, as long as it's within a close proximity to the outside of the door. You can lock the door by placing your finger of this little sensor indicated by this little indentation here. So you put your finger there and it will lock the doors. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle and it has a sensor back here, senses the key, it senses your hand position and allows you access to the vehicle. You also have a physical key location located back here uh, you will need to take this cover off right here in order to access it but that's where it is it's only on the driver's side with this particular color it's kind of hard to see but uh, you can see hopefully now that I'm th at this angle this bottom part is a gloss black this is the gray so that's a separate different color but also the the, the hood so it blends in with the sunroof this black so the entire hood from here over is black and then this is your body color here and then also that blends in with the rear glass especially if you tint the glass the inside of the passenger side door now the interior color on the window sticker just says gray and that's it so uh but you can obviously see these seats don't it's not the same color as the rest of it. But anyways, it's called gray on the inside. So once again, we're going to follow the lines. We have this accent here, and then it follows into the handle. Thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, the rest of the door is pretty much, you know, monocolored or whatever. Uh, it does have a handle here, which is enclosed. I guess you could use that for a little pocket. Looks like you might be able to have a hard time getting something out, though, if you have a small item in there change or something and then you have a bottle holder and then a storage space here in a forward position which is nice you, they move the speaker up it says the bose sound system they move that speaker up so that way you can have this more forward pocket which is a little bit easier to get to so that's nice all these upper portions are soft touch here 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 and then when you get down here you have the hard plastics now you notice they have the bose name on this little speaker and the big speaker so you want to make sure you know that it has the bose system Manually adjusted seat here on the passenger side. So this looks like a tan color to me. There's the perforations there on the center portion. It has a little of the design in the center of the seat, that little strip. Really nice looking seats though. Now I like the light color. Brightens up the interior. And the seats, they feel comfortable to me. There's the floorboard. Now the floor mats are not in place. The floor mats are a carpet. They're still in the plastic right now. There's like no tapering. It's wide open leg room here, so that's nice. The seat is kind of low to the ground or low to the floor. Um, so you will need that extended leg room because your feet are going to be straight out. And there's a pocket there so you can put some stuff. The dash is a soft touch surface. All this is soft touch except for the glove compartment door. The smooth plastic on the inside. And check out those vents. Looking nice, nice thin. And they're accented with the uh, that chrome. And then of course you have this chrome strip going across. We'll get to all that when we get inside of the vehicle uh, more. And you can see the the screen kind of pops up there on the dash. You see that? There's a massive sunroof. Here's the inside of the rear door. 
similar styling as the front. It has soft touch, soft touch, just like the front as well. Really con kind of concerned about these handles here. It, it, you can use it as a pocket, but man, if you were to get something small in there, it's going to be really hard to fish it out. All right. Okay, so here's the back seat. It's basically a bench seat and does have the center armrest and cup holders that fold down. These seats do fold down to add to your cargo space. I'll show you that in a minute. Has the latch system for car seats. There is a net pocket on the back of the passenger seat, but not the driver's seat. Both seats have this hard plastic on the back. And the seats are, the rear seat's a little bit higher, it looks like. So that way you're, you don't have to stick your legs out so much and your knees aren't sticking up in the air. It does have a hump in the center. It is flat on top though. There's one USB charge port back here and climate control vents. So the back seat passengers will have to fight over that USB port. So looking at the back of the vehicle here, uh, so it has the, the black roof and it also has a little shark fin antenna, shark fin antenna in the top center, which is also black. And then you have your third brake light there at the very top of the glass. Kind of hard to see with the window glare, but it's quite wide. And check it out, a little lip spoiler. And man, is it, it has a sharp edge. Look at that. Kind of sticks out, pretty interesting. And following the lines here on the side of the vehicle, so we follow them in right in to the tail light design here. So they extend out the same size as the tail light there, that portion. And the tail lights are a combination of LED and standard bulbs, so the turn signals are standard bulbs. And the L the the LED taillights extend across the trunk as well. The backup camera is in a perfect, perfect in this vehicle. I think this is the perfect location. It's in the very center. So we have it right here in the center, uh, but it's also hidden and it's in a high position. So a lot of vehicles have them in this very low position or offset. They'll have them like way over here in the, in the very bottom. So they get dirty easy and all that stuff. This is in a high position. It's, it's easy to get a good view from the camera, but also uh, it doesn't get as dirty and it's easy to clean and it's kind of integrated into the vehicle. It's, it's like not standing out or being an eyesore. It's really cool. And you have your exhaust tip here on the right side. I think the exhaust is maybe a little bit overdone for this, this vehicle, I'm not sure, but let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, so opening up the trunk, you have to have the key to do this, but there's a button right in here. It looks like a surface of the, the vehicle. It looks like this surface here, but this is actually a button. So we can push that right there and it'll, it has like a little um, biometal switch in there. And it's the same color as the vehicle. So if the color match that button, um, but it releases the trunk. And then there you can actually see the backup camera a little bit better there. See how well they integrated that? It's right in the center. They integrated the button, they integrated the backup camera. It's all nice. Uh, it also has that feature where once it's turned on, as long as you have the, the key with you and the vehicle's locked and you stand behind it for a few seconds, it'll go ahead and release the trunk and open it up for you. So that way if your hands are full, uh, you just walk up with the key, it opens up, like literally lifts up the trunk. So that's a pretty cool, it's the hands-free trunk release system. Uh, and Hyundai's had that for a while and I, I really think it's a good idea, but you can turn it on or off. So, um, you know, if it's something you wanna use, you wanna make sure you turn it on, or if you just don't want that to accidentally release the trunk uh, when you don't want it to, you can of course turn it off. All right, so here's your trunk area and here's the uh, little releases to lower the seats here and here 
and they're a different color so you can see them but they're not too bright and ever anything but just look under here you have exposed speakers and wires and metal so if you have some luggage back here and you kind of cram it in here it might damage your luggage so you want to keep that in mind and you can fold these seats down in a 60 40 split fashion and add to your cargo space when you need it these little things are they have velcro on one side and you can stick them on this this cargo mat here this kind of like a felt material in different places to secure you know things from sliding around if you'd like all right this lifts up like so that's the underside which is rubber of the cargo mat so you can flip this over and use that rubber side if you want it's more like a i'm gonna say it's rubber but it's more it's like a plasticky rubber this lifts up and this is your this is where you'll find your spare tire and tools and a little bit of extra cargo space that you can squeeze some stuff under here now there is some tie downs here you can put a, a net pocket in place and there's a one center light which looks like standard bulbs there I really like the fact that however you open the trunk let's go ahead and use the key okay so we're going to push that it actually raises the trunk all the way up so you're not having to lift it up getting your hands dirty or whatever uh, to lift it up or just the fact that your hands can be full and it lifts up out of your way I really like that spring-loaded trunk the fuel door is here on the driver's side which is nice and it's a locking door so right now it's locked it locks with the vehicle so when the vehicle's locked it's locked well, let's go ahead and unlock the vehicle now it'll be unlocked as well as the doors so we're going to go ahead and push it and release it and it has a traditional cap tether and a place to hang the cap on the inside of the door while you're pumping gas it does have the blind spot monitor uh, and the rear cross traffic alert and the indicators are here on the side mirrors they'll illuminate when there's a vehicle in your blind spot to start it up as long as you have the key inside the vehicle it can be in your pocket in a bag in the cup holder whatever you put your foot on the brake hold it and push this button right here to start it you don't have to hold the button you just push the button It's interesting it actually has a timer uh this is the first time i've seen this in a vehicle that's so prominent um where it actually has a countdown timer when you don't interact with the vehicle and it's just in park like right now it has a timer which will turn off the engine um so if i push the brake or just touch anything put it in gear i'm gonna push the brake right now it resets that timer so if i interact with the vehicle resets the timer but if i forget that the vehicle's on and i walk away from it it will turn off in 30 minutes now that's a long time i wonder if you can change that time period um but the purpose of this is if you accidentally leave your car running in a garage uh, then you will not get hopefully not get carbon monoxide poisoning um, because if you don't know it's running and all and it has this uh, odorless gas building up in your house extremely dangerous situation so um, other vehicles i've seen other vehicles that turn off in a shorter amount of time so i'm assuming that you can adjust this time period because 30 minutes is still a long time to have it running um in your garage or something like that so if the purpose of this is to avoid that safety that that hazard uh it probably needs to be lowered down more you know to a like five minutes or something like that so 30 minutes is a long time but, uh, but this is the first time I've seen an actual timer right here, prominent, that shows you that it's actually gonna turn off. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice these little hooks right here. This is where the, the mats hook in place here and there, so that way it doesn't slide around on you or get sideways. There's the accelerator, brake pedal, and the accelerator pivots here at the bottom. Has a pretty good sized footrest there on the left side, which is nice. Let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there is a latch, a little bit to the right of center, so you can see the top of this right here. The top of this emblem is right in there. So you just reach in, move it to the left, and lift the hood up. So you can see it right there. And the hood goes up and stays up by itself, which is nice. 
has seals across the front and back, insulation on the underside of the hood. You also have an insulated firewall with heat shielding as well. Insulated battery over here that's easy to get to. And a plastic cover covering up the engine, of course. But hey, we can see a little bit of metal on this side. That's nice. And we see the exhaust out the back. So your intake is in the front, exhaust in the back. The under the side of this cover uh, has some foam insulation there. I guess it's more of a cushion. So there's what it looks like under the cover. So you can see your coil packs and wires there. More plastic, basically. This vehicle is powered by a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine with gasoline direct injection, pumping out 191 horsepower and 181 pound-feet of torque. Now this is paired to a, an eight-speed automatic transmission. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the passenger side, except for it has a few more buttons. So you have the ability to lock out the rear windows, power windows, the front two are automatic, one touch up and down, and the front glass here is laminated. So it has two panes of glass and a lamination material uh, in the inside, an acoustic material. supposed to help with noise getting in the vehicle and it does give it a stronger glass um, but it is harder to break and get through that glass so there's some positive positives and negatives there with having laminated side glass so you have your door lock controls your side mirrors are adjusted here you just pick a side and adjust it with that little pad power seat here on the driver's side now it has the ability to go up and down like a dentist chair and adjust it, all that stuff. It also has a two-way lumbar adjustment. Here to the left of the steering column, you have a few buttons. You have the trunk release, traction control, default is on. You can turn it off here if you need to spin tires. Uh, this is your electronic parking brake, so you push it and pull it out. Dimmer switch for your interior gauges, and then you have your lane departure warning system, which you can turn on or off. Tilt and a telescoping steering column as well. Okay, I'm sitting in the driver's seat checking it out. And I have the seat all the way back, all the way down, and I'm six feet tall, and... I kind of feel like a toddler here because I'm can barely I can't even touch the pedals unless I really 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 try um, so there's plenty of leg room here in the front here knee room and all that stuff so this is all good the steering wheel is an interesting design so you notice it has this kind of pattern here that they want to emphasize the shape of the steering wheel right in here Thought that thought that was interesting. Now the leather wrapping is kind of slick. It's not it's not super grippy. Uh, it does have a smooth, more slippery than I like um, feeling to it. Now your cruise control is here on the right side. So once you turn it on, you can set resume and all that stuff. It's a radar adaptive cruise control in which you can set the the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you here, and in this you can turn on the steering. Uh, assist with your lane departure uh, road departure type stuff you can keep the vehicle in the lane by turning this on or off so I'll just give you a little indicator that it's on now this button and this button corresponds with the screen the center part and the side part of the screens here I'll show you that in just a minute here on the left side is your volume for your radio and this changed through your um, your radio tracks or stations depending on what you have up there's your bluetooth phone answer hang up mode is your audio source and your voice recognition is here there's your windshield wiper controls on the right side 
turn signal here on the left, but it also has your headlight controls. So you have off, automatic. So you can turn off your daytime running lights. Automatic, parking, and then your headlights there. Pretty interesting design, nice and grippy. Okay, so let me try to pull the seat up here because I'm so far back. And it has a screen basically for your gauges. So this is all one big screen. And so you can see it has the, um, the RPMs there on the right side, speedometer on the left, and it has a digital speedometer there. You also have your fuel gauge and your engine coolant temperature there on the right side. Outside temperature, what gear you're in, and over here is your odometer. So they kind of spread everything out. And then this is your distance to empty, by the way. So it has some useful information. It's not clustered up, it's separated, which is nice. So that's all good. So using these buttons here, you have up and down, and then you push. So this is up and down, and then you push this in to select, and then you have a pages here. So right now, I'm gonna scroll down so you can see that information there on the right side is in the center of that gauge. Now if we push this button, the pages button, then it changes the center of the, basically the similar information there, but just in the center of the gauges instead of there on the right side. And then when we get to, let me get back to it, keep passing it, this one, we can scroll through and you can get more information, just like the side. Right here where it says select controls, we can hit that, go to the driver assistance settings, and then it pops up here on the screen. So that's kind of a way of getting over to the driver assist settings. All right, there's your start button. And this is the touch screen, which is kind of extended up a little bit higher than the rest of the dash so that way you have you know you can see it good and uh, it's not too low down towards you know keeping your eyes too far away from the uh, the road so you have a traditional volume knob and then you have soft buttons here on the sides on both sides in addition to the buttons on the screen so right now we're in a home in the home screen okay so um, we can it's kind of a split between navigation radio and then your weather so you can have anything you want here you can customize this there's your clock it's in a center position it could be a little bit larger but i like this at least it's in the center kind of blends in a little bit too much but man the screen looks fantastic the blacks look black and they blend in with the the edge here of the screen so there's not like a washed out colors so it does have uh, real vivid colors and the contrast is all nice so let's go ahead and look at the radio. Make, make that selection. You have your presets there, and then it shows you what your radio you're on and all that. So we can change the source. Let's turn the volume down. So as, as we're pushing this mode button here, you know, you change your source. Uh, you can also go to enter channel. Since satellite radio, has so many channels you can quickly go into a particular channel um, you can change the band am fm satellite radio and if you have a device like bluetooth or something like that you're able to select that when you plug it in so right now there's nothing like that um, plugged in or attached to the vehicle so um, you know you're not going to be able to play anything but it does have the ability to play through usb bluetooth um, things like this Okay, so let's look at the navigation map. So we can pinch zoom, which is nice, nice and fast. Look at that. No lag or anything like that. That's nice. All right, let's go to the nav screen here where we can save and select addresses. And you notice it keeps, since this is a big screen, you can have this popped up your radio um, or you can have it go away and that way you have the the full picture here. All right, let's go to media here. See if it'll show anything. It's not gonna show anything just because we don't have anything plugged in. And then you have your uh, options here, your setup. So we can go into, um, you know, connect devices, your vehicle, navigation, all these different things here.
and this is the vehicle settings that we showed you from before what you can get into uh, specifically though when I transitioned from the the gauges to here was specifically the uh, the safety settings that were you know pertaining to that um, but this is all your settings So that's kind of a quick rundown of what the screen is all about. Um, there's more involved. It has a lot, of, has quite a bit of features here that you can go into. Um, and you can see it has quick icons there that you can get into. But it does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay capabilities. So you will have to plug in the device for those. You can see they're grayed out. Same thing with the media. It's grayed out because there's nothing plugged in. Um, but hey, check it out. Voice memo. So you can hit that and record. A memo this is a fantastic idea because there's so many times I have ideas that I want to rec that I want to you know take note of and if I'm driving it's kind of hard to really take note of that so this is a really good way of doing that I like that feature Okay, so that's the quick rundown, and um, like I said, there's a lot more to it, but that's just going to give you an idea of what the screen looks like and how to navigate through it and the different capabilities there. Now, here's your climate control. It's a dual zone climate control, driver and passenger. You can sync them both. There's the temperatures for both driver and passenger, and it, right now they're synced, but it shows you right there. So you have your fan speed where you want the air to blow. You does have heated seats for the driver and passenger, rear defrost, front and rear defrost, all that stuff. Also heated steering wheel. So the heated steering wheel is just on or off, but the heated seats have a low, medium, and high. Same thing for the driver, the passenger. So down here, it's like a little storage compartment, but it also has a wireless phone charging system as well. 12 volt power supply, USB input, and then USB charge port. And this is your shifter. It's basically a push button shifter. So right now it's in park. Uh, let's go ahead and put it in reverse. When we put it in reverse, the backup camera pops up here. And it does have the active guidelines. And since this is in the very center position, it kind of represents the position of the vehicle better than if it was offset. You can see from the bumper all the way to the sky and all around. It's a, it's a wide angle view, so you can see. You can adjust the brightness, contrast, all that stuff. All right, there's neutral, drive, and then park. So as simple as just pushing buttons. All right, so these are blank positions here, here, and here on this vehicle. It does have an auto hold, so it'll actually hold the brake for you while you're sitting in traffic and you're just sitting there in, with the vehicle in drive. If you turn that on, um, then it'll allow you to let your foot off the brake and it'll hold the vehicle until you push the accelerator. So this is how you control your drive mode. So it has smart, which is emphasized more on, it's like an eco mode, more for fuel economy, normal, and sport. So let's just show you what it looks like. It's pretty cool because it has this animation on the screen here. All right, so now we're in smart. We'll go up to normal, and you just rest on the one you want. Sport, looking pretty cool. It also has a custom, so you can customize however you want it. There's sport, and then normal kind of cools things off. The sport heats things up. I thought that was pretty cool. There's your cup holders. And it has a place for a phone right there in the center or this way. It's open in two different directions. Cup holders have these little things that secure the, the cup. And allow for different size cups and has a rubber bottom um, that you can take out and clean I'll leave that in there but it's kind of tight in there but you can pull this out clean it and put it back in and also the rubber bottom keeps things from sliding around too much 
there's a little little dished out spot right here right in there is your um the latch for your um armrest but check out the armrest it's really quite long and it's rubbery soft it's not like cushy soft it's kind of rubbery feeling and then we reach in here lift that up and it doesn't drop down on you so it's kind of spring loaded so that's nice lift it up and there's your storage compartment nothing really special about it um, just has this you know felt lining at the bottom and you know just put some stuff in there it's like the junk drawer of the vehicle I guess you probably could use this space right here to put some small item you know a few pieces of change or whatever but uh, it's because it, it is enclosed but it might get in the way of you releasing that I'm not sure rearview mirror has an is auto dimming so right it's auto dimming right now because I have the shade over the light sensor which is here on this side back here home link garage door opener controls on the underside okay so up here you have your uh, your blue link and roadside assistance emergency buttons up here interior lights can all be turned on with this button and this one turns them on with the door only you can turn on these reading lights independently just by pushing them like so this is for your sunroof I'll show you that in a second there's a mirror in the in the visor um, but the light is up here so there's a separate little button there for the light there's your mirror it has a little clip right here the visor does slide out on a plastic rod and this is like a cloth, same matches the uh, the headliner, like cloth headliner. Same thing there on the passenger side. Okay, so this has the, uh, started raining, but it has a panoramic sunroof. So you can see this part moves, the back part is fixed. So this is actually side slide back and has a power shade. Let me go ahead and move the shade forward. I'm not gonna open it up because it's raining, but I think you get the idea but the shade covers a hundred percent of the light which is nice okay so let's look at the visibility in the back uh, small pillars there in the back they do have the windows and um, I'd say pretty good visibility looking out from my opinion side mirrors looking in the back in the rearview mirror and all that stuff over my shoulder of course all the technology helps out with blind spots and you know avoiding collisions but i think the visibility is pretty good all right there you have it thank you for watching and thank you to parkway hyundai here in wilmington north carolina they are they are the only dealership in wilmington that i work with for a reason so they have an excellent staff and management and everything i don't work for them they don't pay me anything um but i do enjoy work, working with this dealership um, exclusively in Wilmington. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.